So this NBA draft class is one of the most hyped in a long time. You got Vic, who's probably the most hyped prospect since LeBron. You got our boy Scoot. People say maybe he's the next Derrick Rose. Like, a lot of great prospects in this draft class. But don't forget about my boy Chet, because oh, technically he's still a rookie. He could win Rookie of the Year. Do not sleep on Chet Holgram. Before we start talking about who's going to win Rookie of the Year, if you haven't already, make sure you leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. Let's start with Vic, though. Like I said in the intro, probably the most hyped prospect since LeBron. I mean, people could maybe make the argument like Zion, but nah, I, I think Vic's got more hype. He's listed at 7'4", 210 pounds, averaged 21.5 points, 10.5 rebounds, and 3 blocks per game over in France. Like, the dude's a prospect that we just haven't seen before. Pretty insane. He had that one dud in the Summer League, his first game. It was against like the Hornets or whatever, and everyone was like, oh, is he going to be good? Then he kind of balled out the rest of the summer league, so... He balled out against the Blazers. Yeah, he balled out completely against the Blazers. I think Vic has an extremely good chance to win, because out of all the guys we'll talk about, he's really the only guy where he's the number one option. You look at the Spurs, who else is going to take shots from him? Like, Kelvin Johnson, Devin Vassell, you know, Zach Collins ain't giving minutes over him, so... <laughs> I feel like Vic's got a really good shot because he's going to put up numbers. He's definitely going to put up numbers. I got some concerns. Like, in terms of just his game, he's going to get points. He's going to play defense. He's going to get blocks. Like, he's going to do everything. Like I said, he's 7'4". He's going to block shots. He doesn't foul. Like, he's going to change the game on defense for the Spurs. I think his offensive game is a little bit raw. I think it needs a little bit of refining, but he's going to average at least 18 points per game, I think. My only problem with Vic is I think there's going to be some injury concerns, and also he's playing for the Spurs. The Spurs hold players out of games. Is he going to hit the 65 game minimum that's a fair point that's the only reason i can see vic not winning in is he plays like 50 games maybe he's injured he gets held out but if he plays let's say like 75 games he's probably gonna put up like 18 points get like three blocks or something ridiculous i think if that happens he wins it i can tell you who's not winning is brandon miller <laughs> yeah probably not now, i don't want to hate on brandon miller too much i i don't know i've just never bought him as a great prospect he did lead alabama to the top overall seed in the ncaa tournament and then he had a god-awful ncaa tournament and I think that just turned me off from him as a prospect. Yeah, that's fair. And he was shaky in the summer league. He had some games where he was all right. He had some games where he was just straight up shit. His but... pre-draft was weird too. <laughs> like the fact that he was trash talking Michael Jordan. He said Paul George was his goat. That was weird. It was. It was. I mean, here's his upside. He's a good shooter. The mellow ball is going to set him up with a ton of good shots. Maybe he can like average 18 points if he's lucky. Like he surprised some people. That's the only way I could see him winning it. Horn are probably going to be trash. He's probably going to be average at best. So yeah, he doesn't have a great shot. Yeah. My problem is like, he's going to be the third guy at best on the Hornets because he's behind LaMelo. And after 20 games, the Hornets are getting back Miles Bridges. And I mean, Brandon Miller, is he even going to start over Gordon Hayward right away? Like, I think he'll be starting by the end of the year, but at the beginning of the year, I think Gordo was probably still going to be the starter. I think they should start him, but yeah, who knows? I don't know if he'll get enough touches, but LaMelo could set him up. We'll see. He just seems to me in the NBA, he's just going to be a guy. He's going to be good, not great. You know, maybe career 15 points per game. I don't know. I'm just not blown away by him as a prospect. Why the hell did they take him second? <laughs> Mike said, I'll do one more for you on my way out. Yeah. <laughs> but how about our boy Scoot Henderson drafted third overall coming to the Blazers. It's not official yet, but he's going to be our starting point guard once we trade Dame. He's got Shaden there with him. <laughs> pretty solid in the short stint we saw in Summer League. Obviously, he's been in the G League, so he's had experience playing the pros. He's got a really decent shot. In my he's opinion. winning it. I think, think so. I think he's winning it because I think Dame's going to get traded, and I think it's kind of going to be like Vic. He's going to be the attraction for the Blazers. Like, yes, we still have Shaden. We still have Ant. We still have Jeremy, but people are going to be buying tickets to go see Scoot Henderson. He's going to be the guy as long as Dame gets traded. Like, if for some reason Dame doesn't get traded and Scoot has to come off the bench, then I think he's in trouble. But I think if Dame gets traded... He's winning rookie. I mean, he came out and said it. Obviously, he went rookie of the year, and I will win rookie of the year. You, do you not believe him? I believe him, but the thing is, I think Anthony Simon's the number one option, clearly. Jeremy then, might be the number two yeah, option. Yeah, then you have Jeremy, who's probably the number two option. Then you have Shaden, who could be the third option. Maybe it's Scoot. Like, you still got a bit too many score first dudes who have been in the league that he'll put up points, but I think he's only going to get, like, 16 points a game, maybe six assists, and with how bad we're going to be, is that 
good enough to win Rookie of the Year. Well, and he's got some highlight dunks when he's yamming <laughs> it on people. He will. He'll have some dunks. I'll He'll have that. some highlights. He'll be an exciting player to watch. And like, I think that's going to help him because people around the NBA are going to know who he is. Now, here's the person people aren't talking about enough, Chet Holgram. Mm -hmm. He's been looking good in Summer League. He's on the Team USA Select team. I think Chet could be the most impactful player out of this group. I think he'll be the one that's actually playing the playoffs on a competing team. The only problem with him is he's not going to be the number one option. He might not be the number two option. So I don't know if he'll put up the numbers, but impact, his defense, Chet's going to ball out this year. Chet is going to ball out, and I'm excited to see what he finally does. I've had to listen to you, you nonstop talk, talk oh, him up for right? about two years straight. So I'm excited to finally see him play in, in the hurt. NBA, but, but I think it's the same problem as like Brandon Miller. Like Shea is the guy in Oklahoma City, and Shea is probably going to have another season where he averages 30 points per game. Jalen Williams is only going to get better. Josh Giddy is only going to get better. I think Chet, he's going to come in and he's going to be a really, really good role player. Like, you know, 15 points per game, three blocks a game, seven, eight boards. But is that enough to win rookie of the year? Yeah, I don't think so. I honestly would have to agree. The only thing Chet has is, let's say he's able to push like 15 points a game, eight boards and like two blocks, and they're like the third seed or something, then he could win. But yeah, I think he just won't put up the numbers that Vic and Scoot do. And finally, let's talk about the Thompson twins. Amin and Asar, identical twin brothers, both 6'7", right around 210 pounds, play very, very similar. In fact, if you look at their stats, they're almost identical. Basically, Asar averaged one more rebound and shot a little bit worse from the field. Here's the problem with them. Kind of like some of the other guys, they have other people on their team that play their position. With Asar, you have Cade, you have Jaden Ivey, he's probably not even going to start. And then Amen, you got Van Vliet, you got Dylan Brooks, you got some guards there, Jalen Green. So they'll be good. I like both them a lot, but again, they're not going to put up the numbers, I don't think. Yeah, I think Asar's got a way better chance, though, going to Detroit, because like you said, he's got Cade, basically, to compete with, and Jaden Ivey. Amen, though, how much playing time is he really going to get on the Rockets? Because they're already pretty set at guard, and from what I know, Amen is more of like a point guard compared to Asar being like a wing, and the Rockets just brought in Fred Van Vliet. They just brought in Dylan Brooks. They already have Kevin Porter Jr. They already have Jalen Green. Like, where are the minutes for Amen on the Rockets? Another problem with the Rockets, they don't have the incentive to just kind of still be shit because they want to be good yeah, yeah. they want to be good because they don't have their picks so they're probably not going to just like play a ton of young players i mean that's the reason they brought in van vliet so i completely agree asar dark horse candidate so gun to your head who you picking i'm taking vic i have to Ooh, say vic okay he'll put up the numbers he's the number one option and i don't think the spurs will be good but i think they'll be okay I'm disappointed in you. Gotta be real. I'm taking Scoot Henderson. Scoot is running away with Rookie of the Year. It's not going to be unanimous, but he is absolutely bringing home Rookie of the Year. Blazers got a long history of guards winning Rookie of the Year. Brandon Roy did it. Damian Lillard did it. Scoot Henderson is doing it. Book it. That's the video, guys. Why do you think Scoot Henderson's going to win Rookie of the Year? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like, as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.